Yo, what's up everyone? How's it going? Thanks for checking out my weekend review video. My name is Raymond Jeffries, I'm a forward trader. In this video I do every week, I like to show you guys what I have on the radar for the upcoming week. But more importantly, I like to show you guys the technical analysis behind it. This week's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a continuation basically off of my past few weeks where we've been going over strategy development, kind of going over the next strategy I plan on testing and adding to my portfolio in regards to the head and shoulders. If you want to link to those videos, there should be a link in the top right hand corner. I definitely would recommend watching those videos so you can kind of catch up to where we are now because they all kind of build off of each other. This last video is going to be basically going over some back tested results of a strategy I tested on the back half of last year. And I think it's important to kind of, you know, show you guys these results and what the results actually look like, you know, what the end numbers look like, why it's important and keep track of these numbers. And I want to show you, you know, what I keep track of, why I keep track of it and why I find it valuable. Some, some of the stuff may be something you don't find valuable, which is completely fine. We are all different as traders, but I think it's important to kind of show you guys, you know, what my results look like and why I find it valuable, like I said, and kind of, you know, dig into the numbers because I, you know, a lot of videos on here on YouTube and stuff like that, I don't actually dig into the numbers showing you their results. So that's what I really wanted to do with the, with this little video series and this video in general. And once I'm done with back testing the head and shoulders, I'm going to make a video going over that. I want to show you guys what, you know, the results I got at the end of that. So hopefully you guys are getting value out of these videos. So with that being said, let's hop into the chart so we can go over those results. All right, so let's hop into the data. The first pair we're going to look at here is the Euro dollar. I was looking at the Euro dollar, some of the things I track when I back test. Um, what I track is, you know, of course you're going to want to track the pair. You're going to want to track, I, I personally try, like to track the higher time frame here. Um, as you can see, whether we're bullish, bearish, and bearish rotation or bullish rotation. The reason why is because I have a filter where I check out for higher time frame confirmation. Um, we're on a 60 minute time frame, um, entry date, entry time, the ATR at the time of entry, which is average true range, uh, to kind of get an idea of the volatility in the market at that time. Um, my CTS score, um, this is, I will get into that later once we get into the filters. Um, then I have my entry price, um, my stop loss, my, my target one price. I also keep track of my total risk per trade. This is off of a two position, um, a two position trade. So basically, you know, split into two positions, each one combined is worth this amount of risk, which is 196 pips or 116 pips. Each, you know, so basically, each pair or each position is worth about 58 pips. Um, so, so that's what that is. I keep track of whether it's a winner or a loser. And now, you know, keeping track of here, which is the filters. So these are the filters I keep track of. It's I find it easier to use a one and a zero. A one if that filter or if that filter does come up, or a zero if it doesn't. Um, one filter you're going to find in all my trades is whether price has gone over, bought, or over. So that's one thing I need, and I need structure, whether it's a higher time frame of structure or a lower time frame of structure. So when we talked about earlier the CTS score, I basically depending on what filter shows up aligns at that specific location, I assign it a score. Um, whether price has gone over, bought, over, sold, that's one point for me. Whether there's divergence, that's another point. Whether there's an ABCD pattern at that location of where I'm looking to get involved, that's two points. Whether we're at a higher time frame, um, a major level of structure on a higher time frame, that's two points for me as well. Whether it's a minor level, a lower time frame structure level, that's one point. Um, and whether you know there's one fib that lines up at that level, there's one point. Whether there's fib confluence, that's two points. Um, higher time frame confirmation, like we said earlier, that's why I keep track of my higher time frame. Um, that's one point. Whether there's a double bottom, double top, or 2618 that, that occurs at the location, that's at a point. And whether we have a psychological number occur at that point as well. I also keep track of that. So basically, those are the filters I track when I backtest, and they all get filtered down into this breakdown sheet. What this breakdown sheet basically tells me, it basically breaks down each each variation. What I mean is here. Okay, so I have my CTS breakdown. So you can see here, any, when I had a CTS score of two, um, I had one trade and it, was, <laughs> it wasn't a winner. Um, when we have CTS score of three, I can see I had, okay, I had six total trades. One was a winner, five were losers. Boom, don't want to, that's not a high enough quality. I don't want that in here. When I have a CTS score of four, I can see I had a 16, I had 16 trades with three of them winners. Don't want that included when I, when I trade. When a CTS score of five, you can see there I had 98 total trades. 58 of those were winners and 40 were losers. That's a that's a hit rate of about 59%. Um, so so that's something. Okay, well that's kind of like my cutoff. That's where I do want to start including it into my into my specific way as a, as a minimum score. Um, I also keep track. Like I said, these are the filters. These are the filters which tell me what shows up at that at that level and kind of the win rate of that filter. 
So here out of the total of the 212 trades where I had a major level of structure, I had 98 wins and 114 losses, which isn't great. You know, that's about 50%. That's not a great win. It's not a great win, but it's good to know this data. Um, you know, um, when I was at a minor level of structure, I won about 50% of the time out of the 305 trades. When I had an ABCD pattern locate, uh, occur at that level, I won 53% of the time. So maybe this is something I want to make sure I include into here. When I have FIB, this is one of those where, you know, when I had FIB, one FIB lineup, I had 47% win of the time. And when I had FIB confluence, I won 53% of the time. So maybe, you know, what I want to keep track of, okay, maybe I do want to make sure I have FIB confluence in there in order to, because it gives me a higher higher probability of a win. And that's the main reason why we track these things, track these filters. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too in-depth because of what I could I can combine different filters to kind of give me a win rate if like say if I combine may, you know, if you once you get it once you get into Excel and you start understanding how Excel works you can combine your trades where you look for combined major structure with overbought oversold with divergence and a double top and kind of see what your win rate is with those filters you can do that as well and that's why it's important to keep track of this at the beginning so you don't have to go back and recheck it later um, another thing I track I check my baseline with one target here. Um, so this is my average win versus average loser with my baseline testing. With my optimized testing, once this is that CTS five and above, this is my baseline. You can see it's pretty much exactly the same. I get about a 1.75 risk reward um, on each trade. So it's roughly the same. You just have a higher quality when you have a minimum of CTS five. Um, when you, this is a breakdown per year of ROI per year. Um, that's something I keep track of, and this is something I keep track of. This is, I feel, is more important. This is the analysis by month, uh, and this is this. what this does is gives you a clear idea of kind of what you can expect per your pair, uh, per the, for, for this particular strategy per month. Um, as you can see here, you know, in the month of January, we've had in the past few months, you can see we've, we one month we had 3.34% return a month. And then the last year is negative 1.16% return. And what I do is I a actually average it out. Um, so I get my average ROI over the years I've tested, which is all these years from 2009 to 2020. I keep a trailing five year, which is the last five years, which you can see here is from 2016 to 2020. And then I keep a trailing two years. The reason why I do this is because markets change over time. You can see there's a lot more volatility back here in 2009 and 2016, 2017 than there is currently, and strategies act differently over time. And that's why, I, you know, I, I, I want my overall average, of course, but I kind of want to know, I want to, I put more value on the recency bias of my strategy. I want to know how it's doing more recently. So that's why I keep track of that. So that's one target, and this is all the same data off of two targets. Um, and you, when we get down here looking at two secondary targets, you can see here out of the 253 wins, this is something I keep track of, on, like I said, on the baseline and optimize. This is CTS 5 and above. This is all my numbers combined. You can see here on secondary targets, I had 253 wins. I, I only hit secondary targets 116 times, 160 times, so about 45%, which isn't a high percentage. It's a little less than half. Um, as you can see here, right on right here, you know, this is the set how many times break even was hit out of those winners. And it, I, right here, it gives you a baseline secondary targets of my average win versus average user. You can see when you actually go for secondary targets, your average loser, um, your, sorry, your average winner and average, your average winner goes down about $10. Um, and that's per winner. And your average loser stays about the same. So when you look at it that way, what that tells you is that, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be going for secondary targets on this particular particular you know, trade, particular type of setup on this pair. Because as you can see, I'm losing more, I'm, I'm, well, I'm losing the same amount per loser, right, $93 on the optimize as well. I'm losing the same, same amount of money, but I'm not winning as much. I have a worse risk reward. So maybe I should only go for one target. Um, what sorry one target up here and I think that's valuable to know because I think a lot of times a lot of traders shoot for those secondary targets on certain pairs when they really shouldn't be and as you can see it, it hurts their ROI over time and you can see the ROI over time on this pair six six point five one uh, per year on this when I when you trade it one uh, optimized target on for like for sorry for one target it's seven point eight six 
And you can see that the average drawdown was a lot higher on the, um, sorry, the max drawdown was a lot higher on the, not a lot higher, but a few percentage points higher on secondary when you shoot for secondary tar targets compared to the one target. So this all in all, what this tells me is, okay, well, I want to have at least a CTS-5. I'm looking at my filters. I know personally as a trader, I want to have at least structure and price to go over, bought, over, sold, and I want to make sure I at least hit that CTS-5 score. And I know right here, I want to shoot for, I want to go for the optimized and because you know, I'm, I'm shooting for a higher quality of trade and I'm only going for one target as opposed to two targets. The reason for that is because, like I said, the average winner compared to the average winner on the, the when I trade for secondary targets isn't as good. And as like I said, you can see, we only hit secondary targets 45% of the time. Is that something worth you know shooting for secondary targets? Or you're, you're be, like I said, you also depends on the number of the time you're gonna be in the trade, you're gonna miss out on opportunities, being in looking for secondary targets. So it's important to get this data. Don't just shoot for secondary targets, just shoot for it. Um, what I also have, I also have a breakdown per year, um, kind of get an idea of what equity, the equity curve looks like. Um, the reason why I do this is because, so this is the baseline data. This is all the data put in there to kind of get an idea of what the, what the yearly average return is, what the um, win percentage is, number of trades, and average pips per year. And you can see each year is a little bit different. You have some years where you're right out the gate, you kind of go sideways and you kind of shoot up at the end. You have a year where you have a big drawdown in here. This is something you need to know if you're gonna trade. And this is, sorry, this is the baseline. When we go to optimize, you can see some years when you just have a nice smooth equity curve higher, but you will have those dips in there. You can see when we go to the optimize, you can have, you, I have a 14.61% return at 51% win percentage, which isn't great, but it's good enough. Um, average number of trades per year, 40. And you can see here, average pips, 1377. So I have that breakdown per year. Um, like I said, look, look, at the, look at the equity curves per year. This one kind of shot up, kind of a steady move higher. Um, this one shot straight out of the gate. And then the last few months, you can see it pretty much is channeled sideways. Um, this one shot up at the beginning, channel sideways, hitting you equity highs towards the end of the year. You can see this was that drawdown we looked at before price rallied back up to basically go up about 4% this year. Um, you can see this was a big drawdown right here. You know, this is important information because you want to know what your pair does and what the equity curve looks like, kind of so what you know what to expect. So when you go through a drawdown, you're not panicked. You understand that, okay, this is normal. This can happen for this particular pair. And I have this breakdown per pair. Um, per pair, um, and I also have a combined version, which I'll show you at the end of this video. And this is what the Euro dollar looks like on the combined, uh, all the numbers combined over the years. This is what that equity curve looks like. You can see it's a nice smooth equity curve. Let me back out a little bit so you can get a better view of it. Um, you can, but you can see there were drawdowns. There was a drawdown here. 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 But you can see it was making nice equity highs. There's currently in a drawdown there. So it's it's important to have an idea that of what your numbers do during that time frame. Um, and that's for this pair. But this is the most important page. Like I said, the reason why is because you get a clear idea of what your return should be per month. And now we're gonna hop on the next pair. The next pair is gonna be a contrast to this pair, um, kind of showing you the differences. Like I said, at the, it's important to have an idea of how different pairs react, even the same strategy. Like I said, I always thought that you know every strategy is the same. Um, you trade it on whatever pair, it should be exactly the same, but each strategy, like I said, you treat it like its own employee. It's gonna be different, they're not gonna act the same, and hopefully this video will give you a contrast of two different pairs and what I mean by that. So with that being said, let's hop on to the next pair. All right, so the next pair we have here is the Euro Aussie. This is actually my favorite pair. Um, it's funny how you get attracted to certain pairs because the way they react. I personally really like this pair because I know when I'm right, I find out right away. When I'm wrong, um, I know uh, because with this pair, when you're right, it kind of tends to give you that winner quick. When you're wrong, the, it'll kind of stay in the trade a little longer. Price will kind of move around a bit and then stop you out. So it's just one of those pairs that i am become a, really attracted to. And we're tracking the same stuff. You know, we're tracking the pair, the time, you know, the, whether the higher time frame is bearish or bullish. Um, we're tracking the same filters. You know, we're going risk per trade. Um, some of this might be repetitive, but I, you know, I want to go over it again. Um, we're tracking... 
um, the filters um, and we're tracking here when we go a little bit further you can see this is the secondary targets of course and whether the, those targets were hit um, and I also like to personally I forgot to add this at the beginning I like to keep track of the days I'm in a trade uh, the reason why I keep, like to keep track of that is because it may be something I include later on down the line um, but I like to just you know keep an idea of what my average days were trade so I have an idea of how long I'm going to be in a, in a particular trade or not um, because whether you shoot for secondary targets or one target that's going to vary so that's why I keep track of it but you know you don't have to just something I keep track of um, so when we get down to the breakdown numbers this is one of those things like I said this is why it's important to kind of break down your numbers get into here see what's going on so when you look at this you can see when I have a CTS five compared to the euro dollar, you know I only win about forty four percent of the time. So in this pair, like in, when we go to CTS six, you can see I win about half half the percent of the time, about fifty percent. So on this particular pair, this particular strategy, I need at least a CTS six to get involved in any type of trade. That's me personally, and that's the way I tested it. And when we go look over here. You can, you can look at the different um, different filter breakdown. There isn't a really big filter. Um, so that, that occurs except for when you look at fib confluence compared to one fib you can see when we have fib confluence we have a higher win percentage okay so maybe i want to make sure we have higher we, when we have fib confluence when i get involved um you can see right here the psych number when when, when the price occurs at around a psych number um you can see uh, out of the 100 233 trades that 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 occurred in 130 of those are winners about 55% of the time. So that little edge, maybe something I want to keep track of, maybe something I want to make sure I include on my setups. Um, when we look at the the baseline numbers, you can see, you can see like you can see the average risk reward is not as good as the euro dollar. You can actually see it went down here when we went from the baseline to the optimized. It went down in regards to we had the same average winner, but we had one less. Well, we basically lost an extra dollar when it came to the losers. Which is fine, you know. It didn't hurt the average risk reward that much, um, but when we look at the secondary targets, this is where, you know, understanding the, the secondary targets and what what pairs you want to trade it on. Because when we look at the baseline, out of the 213 trades that were winners, you can see we hit secondary targets 125% of the time, and on the optimized, you can see out of the 208 winners, we hit secondary targets 120 times. That's 58% of the time, roughly. And that is 10 to 12 percentage points higher than on the euro dollar. So what that means, what that tells me is maybe this is a pair I want to shoot for secondary targets on. You know, euro dollar, I only hit secondary targets 45 percent of the time. So why would I? And I was at, and I had a, and you you saw you how you were losing money when you're shooting for secondary targets, as opposed to here on the euro Aussie, you can see that on my secondary targets, on my average winner on my optimized CTS six and above. I, I win $163 per winner and I lose 105 compared to the optimized one target I win 157 so I increase my winners by six dollars it doesn't seem like it's that much I understand that but over a hundred trades that's you know or hundreds of trades that's 600 pips or hundreds of you know that that that's a thousand you know the, you can do the math you can understand that you know it that little that little gain over time is gonna add up um, and also, I think you check on my, my max drawdown, um, my average drawdown, and my average ROI. Um, and when we go over here, this is going to be a little bit more volatile pair as well as Europe from the euro dollar. And you're going to see that with the drawdown. And that's why you need to understand, okay, are you willing to take this type of drawdown to have that type of return? Is that something that average drawdown you're willing to risk to include it into a portfolio? Me personally, I am. Because... I like this pair. I like to trade it. When when I put my combined numbers together, I can see that my average drawdown wasn't a crazy number. So when we look over here, like I said, this is this is the important stuff for me personally. I want to know how this pair does on a monthly basis. So in January, over the past 12, 12 years or so, I can see that on average, I'm about a one percent. Well, sorry, I forgot to include this earlier. I actually divide whatever returns I have in half. So as right here, it says 0.8 is actually 1.6. The reason why I do this because I like to include, you know, I like to include, um, let's give myself the worst case scenario. And because there are going to be times where you, uh, this happened to me already this year where I got stopped out by the spread and it ended up being a two target winner. And I think, I think on that particular trade, it was about, including the loser, it was about 400 pips. So that was really frustrating. And that's going to happen in trading where you get stopped out by the spread on a valid setup. So 
you know, I always like to err on the side of not of caution and, you know, being realistic and knowing that I'm not going to get every trade, every winner in there just due to market conditions. Um, with that being said, you know, we're keeping track of the same thing, or average ROI over time, and then we're keeping track of the trailing five years and the trailing two years. You can actually see the last two years, this particular this particular pair has been negative in January. So if I have a negative January for this pair, am I gonna stress? No, I understand that, that that's gonna happen. It's happened the past few years, but overall, over time, it's been positive. Overall in February, it's been positive. The last two years, it's been positive. In March, I can see, historically, you know, this may not be a great month for me. I had a negative overall, a negative the last five years, negative the last few years. Maybe I wanna take this month off in regards to trading it. Um, it really just, and this is why this data is so important. You can see right here, like I said, in, in uh, June, you can see this was a this is a positive pair in June in regards to the last five years, the last two years, it's really outperformed. So I want to make sure I, I'm there for that for when this happens. And that's the importance of getting this data. And like I said, that's one target, and down here is two targets. And when you combine it right here, you can kind of see the last two years, it's not a great return, but you got to remember you're including this into a whole portfolio. This is just one pair. Um, there's a lot of numbers in here. I know it's a little confusing, but I think it's helpful for you guys to see what it looks like and what I'm, you know, what I'm keeping track of because this is stuff that you know I find valuable. You might not, and maybe too much for you, which is fine. You know, we don't all have to keep track of the same stuff. Uh, when we get into the spreadsheet in regards to keeping track of the, um, sorry, the the equity curve, you can see. Some year, this is the baseline when we get to the optimize. It's roughly the same. You can see right here, big drawdown here. You got to be able to understand that you go from 10.5 all the way down to that's about a 7, 8% drawdown. You got to understand you're going to have years where it looks like this. This is not a pretty equity curve. You know, it's, it's going to happen when you have nice smooth years where prices goes up like that. You have years where price dips down, goes up, dips down, and ends up at about 4% return. Um, and you can see, this is one of those volatile pairs that, uh, that it's included in my portfolio, but over time has outperformed really well. Um, this is what 2020 looked like, like I said. But overall, this is what that pair looks like. You can see you have some volatility in here. That's why it's important to, like, you know, diversify your the the pairs you trade and the way you trade in regards to having different strategies because you can see overall there's some volatility in here but the price has gone up the price has gone from lower left to upper right with some volatility in the middle and that's going to happen like i said it, that's all strategies but this is one of those pairs that that really attracts me in regards to uh, that i really like to trade i'm getting deeper into and understanding and next what we're going to do is we're going to actually hop into the um I want to show you guys my combined numbers and you know why it, you know this stuff is important but it's more important to keep track of the combined numbers so you kind of see what it looks like all together. All right, so all that testing brings us to this page. Uh, well, the next few pages actually. So what this page does is what tells us is this is all my combined numbers. This is a, when I put all my numbers together. Uh, my optimized numbers together, that is, and for all nine pairs in this portfolio, which is the Aussie dollar, Euro Aussie, um, dollar, Euro dollar, dollar, Euro yen, pound dollar, pound yen, um, New Zealand dollar, dollar CAD, and dollar yen. This is what it looks like in regards to my average risk reward, which is, you know, on, on my average winner, I should have, have went about 158 compared to my average loser should be in 97. That gives me an average risk reward of 1.63. Um, but be mindful because, you know, once you track all your pairs, you're not going to trade the difficult thing about the, the currency market is you're not going to trade 24 hours. You're going to have time to sleep. And the most important thing is being consistent. So what I ended up doing is I ended up taking out the hours I'm not going to be trading because of, you know, sleep and <laughs> I'm just not going to be awake. So when I come, took those numbers out and I put my numbers in from the optimized time, which is about 5 a.m. to about 9 p.m., you can see it, how what that basically came down to. That gave me the exact same average winner and average loser, the same risk reward. So I know when I trade, my numbers should give me an average score of somewhere of 1.63. I know that it should be in there. How do I know that? Because that's been averaged out over the last 12 years. So if my numbers are off, like say I'm getting a 1.1, then I know something's wrong. I know that okay. Am I messing up? Am I am I taking on too much risk on these trades? Am I because I'm my average reward isn't as good as it should be. Um, I know that my max drawdown is seven point two two percent. 
Uh, my average drawdown is about 4.41%. My annual return is about 22%. But and this is something that's important to know, your max drawdown for weeks. Um, drawdown doesn't necessarily mean how you have, to, you have to go straight down. Drawdowns could be where you're moving sideways in your equity curve. That's 21 weeks. That's a long time. Remember, this is only one pair. Oh, sorry, not. This is nine pairs on one strategy. This is not all my strategies combined. So that's for this particular strategy, 21 weeks, and I can have 11 losers. That's something you want to keep track of too, because it it's happened in the past. It could happen again. Um, and I know a lot of traders, they, they can get psychologically, that can mess someone up. Um, so it's important to keep track of that stuff because you want to make sure to know how many trades you can lose. Altogether, I logged about 4,000 trades. Um, and to get these numbers right here, because these are the most important numbers to me, um, I want to find this, what this tells me, like I said, this similar to per pair, but this is for my pairs combined. Um, for the last two years, you can see I actually had a negative January. You can see overall 2.64%. Um, last five years, oh, and like I said, remind you, this is the overall number divided by two. So actually, this should be about five point something percent. This should be about 8%. Um, I just, like I said, I cut it in half because I like to look for the lower estimate. So, and, you know, overshoot that if that makes sense. Um, so what this tells me last two years, okay, so February, the last two years has actually been a profitable year, uh, profitable month, I mean, so has the last five years and the last 12 years. So this should be a good month. March has been a profitable month for me as well. Um, April, same thing, profitable month overall. Uh, what this tell, what the importance of this is it gives me a breakdown per year so I can get an idea of what is possible per month. Um, I want to know there's some months where you where it really outperforms, some months, some months where it's negative. Negative percent, negative percent. And I have to be okay with that. I have to understand, you know, it's imp you can have really high negative months. And, it, or, and it's important to know that because overall, you know, you want to know what the worst case scenario is. So when it happens, you're not surprised. You're not, you know, scared. You're not tricked out of do you're not tricked out of taking trades. You're valid trades you're supposed to take and end up taking different like, hopping strategies because that's a thing that a lot of traders get into. I did before where I would, you know, have, go through a losing streak, hop into another strategy and hop into another strategy, hop into another, and it's, it's a never ending cycle. So now I actually have my black and white numbers in front of me. I know that I know what my system should do. And when we look at the optimized um, over, you know, this is just optimized my numbers, but this is the optimized over time. This is the time um, in which I'm actually going to be trading. You can see it's pretty consistent. I should average return per year should be about 65%. Um, and that's not divided by two. This is, I haven't had time to do that yet. Um, I know I should win about 50% of my trades, average about 224 trades per year and have about, this is a higher end of the pips because 2019, 2009 was such a big year. But once we take that year out, you can see that cuts it down to about 6,000 pips. But that's still really good for, you know, for me personally. And you can see, boom, this is what the equity curve looks like. We could have years where it shoots out of the gate, shoots sideways, um, shoots out of the gate sideways, trends a little bit higher throughout the year. And the reason why these numbers are important, because you can get an idea per year of that breakdown um, right here. You know, like I said, of 2012, Average winner to average loser, 1.7. Remember what our what my risk reward is? Well, 1.63, somewhere in that range. 239 trades. Um, when we go here, 49% winner in regards to winning percentage, 155 dollars per win, 97 loss. That's a 1.6% in regards to risk reward. Close to that 1.5 uh, that we had. Um, right here, 25, 125 per winner. 85, 81 per loser, 1.54. You can see that once you have a consistent um, strategy that you trade consistently in a consistent time, that these numbers should be roughly the same. 48% you know, win percentage, 48% return, um, $165 per winner, $111 per loser, 1.49. Didn't have as great as a risk reward type in this year, but you can see roughly the same. 2016, roughly the same. Had a higher return, um, same win percentage, maybe a little bit higher, um, same name, number of trades, 132. It's, it's crazy how consistent it can be. 55% uh, return that year of 2017, 49% winner. You can see 1.67, shot a little bit higher, but nothing outrageous. Consistent, 228 uh, trades that year logged. 
2018, 203 year trades log, maybe a little less there, but win percentage and return is roughly about the same. Um, average winner and average loser gives me 1.52, which is roughly where it should be, but 1.58. You can see it gives you a band you can work with. And even in, I think, 2020, 2020, which was a crazy year, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything that occurred, you can see how consistent the numbers were. About 61% return, 49% winner. We know it should be somewhere in that 50% range. Um, average winner, 144. Average loser, 91. And what does that give you? 1.58. Exactly where we should be. Um, and even, in, you know, like I said, crazy years. My numbers, I know my numbers should be roughly the same. And this is what the equity curve looks like over time. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to do that. There we go. So I know this is what my equity curve should look like if I trade. And this is important. This is what my equity curve should look like if I trade my plan the way I back tested it. If I do my job as a trader in trading my plan the way I'm supposed to, these are the returns I should expect to maintain and continue over time. And I think that's the most important thing. I can show you these numbers, I can show you all this stuff, but the once you have these numbers, it's very helpful as a trader because it gives you an idea, okay, well, this is what should happen. But the most important thing as a trader is doing it consistently, going through those drawdowns, understanding that they're gonna happen and trading through them. And I think that's the biggest thing, biggest hurdle for a lot of traders and was the biggest hurdle for me. And, when I, and it's even harder when you don't have the numbers. When you don't have the numbers, you're kind of flying blind. So, you know, hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys in showing you, you know, I, I don't care about showing you how good the system is. I really don't care about that. I want to show you the, what the reason why I made this video is because I want to show you guys the importance of backtesting, what I track, why I track it, understanding that pairs are different from each other. They don't all act the same and that, you know, it's important to have these and understand what your drawdown, like I said, what your drawdowns look like, what your return should be. Um, and, you know, your job as a trader is to trade that consistently over time. So hopefully you guys got that out of these videos. Um, you guys found it helpful. If you guys did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know if you guys back test like this or if you guys don't, if you, guys, if you find it helpful. If not, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. And always feel free to reach out to me. My socials are down in the description box below as well. Um, thank you guys for checking out my video. I will see you guys in my midweek review video. Take care and I will see you then. Bye.